everyone, Sean Frangella here with another new Cinema 4D and Cinema 4D Lite tutorial about getting started with working with 3D lights and understanding the importance of lighting when we're building out 3D scenes, animations, and materials. So you could do a lot with textures and if you were following along with the last few videos that I set up to get to this point where we have this 3D logo with some custom Cinema 4D materials on it. Be sure to back up and watch those if you want to recreate this logo exactly, where in the first couple parts we talked about extruding this logo in 3D and then adding different materials. But without lighting, there isn't anything to see and there isn't reflection, so everything can look kind of flat. So what I want to go over in this video is different ways to add lights, different settings, and what you can do with the lights. Now what we have here is the scene that we built out in the last video and I built it using some three point lighting as well as HDR lighting. And if we back up and look at what this is doing to our scene with each of these lights, here's our original 3D scene. And all I've added is this wall with the orange material back behind our logo. And if we add lights, you can definitely see the drastic jump from this to this. And the process of this, and if we look at our scene from overhead and step through these is first adding our key light, which we can see is over here then adding a fill light over on the right to balance it out and getting shadows from all those. Adding a rim light on the back to catch our little highlights. And then talking about how to add this sky object with an HDR image to show up spherically in all of our reflections. So let me close out my picture viewer and we'll get started with talking about this. And in my project, I'll just delete those lights so we can start from scratch. And here we have our scene. And if I just do a quick alt R render with our quality a bit lower, Here's what we have, and the only lighting we have so far is the ambient lighting and our ambient occlusion that I've turned on in render settings so we get those little shadows. So without anything, it would be here. If we turn on ambient occlusion, we at least get here. Now, what we want to do is add actual lights, have those hitting our object, cast shadows, and do all the stuff that real lights would do. So if I look at my scene from the top and take a look at my tools, my lights are up here, and there's some main ones I like to use for different settings. The big difference between these, if we take a look at some basic settings is our main light is going to appear like a light bulb. So it's omnidirectional and going to cast light evenly in all directions down here. We could change the type if we grab the wrong one or don't want to have to create a new light. So if the type was spot, now we have our stage light spotlight type light with a cone angle and feather. If we get infinite, it's going to be evenly directional. If we think about, the idea of the sun, it's not pointing it just in one isolated area. It's going evenly from this direction. So if you're using an infinite light, it really just matters the direction it is. If we put it completely on the side, you can kind of see the difference and not things like cone angle. Now, if we grabbed an area light, these are close to Omni lights, but you can see that it gives us this box and we can create a custom shape that light is emitting from. So if we think of something like a computer screen, if it was up here close to our object, rather than just a single point, it would emit it from that shape. So if it was an area light that's way far away, it's pretty much going to do the same thing as an Omni light. But if it's something that's much closer, as well as much bigger, if we think of kind of a giant screen, that area light, if we take a look at our preview versus an Omni light, is going to do things pretty differently. So for this one, let's just start over and I'm going to create an area light and we'll create basic three point lighting and then add an HDR sky. So what I want to do is put this over on the left side and I can move it up and scale it a bit if I want that area to be bigger. And now since it's this shape, it does matter the angle that they're at. So you can see it's emitting this way. If we rotate it and look back and forth at those renders, there is a difference. Now for all lights, the basic properties are we could add a bit of color if we didn't just want white. So maybe we want to create some indoor lighting with kind of a light orange ish color for our key light. And by default shadows are turned off. So we would want to add shadows and there's a couple of shadow types as well. We could of course have none. We could do soft and we'll start to see how those shadows are wall as well as the shadows in here and shot soft shadows will give us this feathered edge without fall off. So it renders a little quicker. If we do ray trace, it's going to be a much more a harsh line. So we can see it's just the outline. And if we do area, it's going to be similar to soft, but it has fall off. So it takes a little bit longer to render, but you're going to get a more accurate look. And if we do a quick render of this, 
Now we can see in full res what that one light is doing with casting our light as well as our shadows versus where we started here where there's just the ambient lighting. Now, lights have a lot of settings and you can really tone this in and do a lot. If you want to do things like, in the case of an area light, you could even change the shape so it's emitting from a different shape like a disc or a cylinder. Under visibility, you can affect things like the fall off. And in shadow, we could further refine that shadow. So in addition to the type, we have the density. And let's just quickly pan over here and we'll look at how that shadow is falling on our wall. And we could tone it down if we want all the shadows to be a little less. And we can see how that'll affect both our object and the shadow on the wall. We could turn it up if we want really dark shadows or really pronounce. We also could adjust the color. So if we're outside, we're probably not going to see 100% black shadows. And we could give this kind of a more realistic feel and adjust the color of these shadows. You can also go even further to add things like caustics if we're seeing light through different materials, as well as noise if we wanted to use lights to add things like fog, where if we set that to illumination, now you can see it's casting different types of turbulent noise and quite a lot of stuff. So let's just keep it simple for now. We'll have that light be our key light. If we wanted a dramatic look, that'd be fine. But if we want something a little more even, we would want to balance this out. So what we could do is take this whole light and copy it by holding command and dragging up in our object manager or starting to drag and holding command in our viewport. And I'm going to put this one on the side. And what we want to do is use this as a fill light. So it'll fill in some of those details. So on this light, I'm going to give it a contrasting light blue color. So it'll kind of balance out the light. I'm going to take the intensity down because we just want this to fill in the light and we'll rotate it to point at our logo. And since it's kind of rotated already, kind of move it to where it's on the side, but we'd still get it filling in. And now if we take a look at those differences with that one on and off, you can really see, especially on the object, how that helps to fill in some of those details and edges. Now, if we want to get a little bit of more definition in the small details and edges, we can take that same fill light and I'll copy it and drag it back. And I'll call this a rim light. And what we can use a rim light to do is just catch some of the details and edges. So we'll get that behind the logo. We can leave it at this light blue and we'll put that intensity even lower. And what that's going to do if we turn it on and off is really help to fill in some of those edges and just give us a little bit more definition. Now we could keep adding lights to do specific things. This is a good basic setup of our light. But one thing we can do in kind of a different way when we're working with 3D is in addition to using physical lights in our scene, we could use this sky object up here and use an HDRI image to wrap around our scene and show a different environment in the reflections of our object. So the way we can do that after we drop our sky in is I'm going to make a new material and I'll call this sky and drag that onto my sky object. Now, if it's just white, all it's going to do is wrap a white object spherically around our scene. So it makes everything just kind of look foggy. But what we can do if we open up this material is instead of color, we could get a hold of different HDRI images that would look like this, where it could be light studios. In this example, these are some grayscale gorilla cinema 4d light studios, as well as different photographic images that you can shoot with different types of cameras and phone apps that create this 360 degree view we have here. So these are also some GSG ones. So check those out if you're looking for some HDR images. There's some really cool ones to start with. And if we drop any of these in and open this up and just check off reflectance, you can see how it greatly changes what we see in our scene. So it can make things really dramatic if we have reflective materials as well as look completely different if we drop different ones in with different colors and setups. You can also blur this here if we wanted to blur a bit and further refine the image if we wanted to click the path and adjust things like turning down the exposure if it's too bright or turning it up if we're getting a bit of too darkness as well as adjust the black point and white point if we want to really push the look. And you can see it by just changing to different HDR images, you can cast completely different looks in your scenes and get something completely dramatically different that you can adjust and refine further. So you can see just using these images in a sky in place of, or in addition to our basic lights and light properties really changes the entire way our 3d scene 
looks if we open up our picture view again and look at the fact that we started here and then step through adding a key fill and rim light as well as this HDR image that we can see in the background and in some little details. Manipulating the light is as important if not more important than what we're doing in our materials. And next we'll start to talk about actually animating this thing, animating a camera and different ways to work with animation and our motion curves in Cinema 4D. So if you wanna keep learning about our intro to Cinema 4D Lite and everything we can do, be sure to check that one out, as well as when we'll get into how to add compositing and post effects and do things like link optical flares and working with Cineware in After Effects. And if you wanna learn more about Cinema 4D or After Effects, be sure to check out some of my other videos as well where we cover all types of topics with motion graphics, VFX, and 3D animation. There's lots of tutorials and I hope you guys are learning a lot from all the different videos. And if you wanna get more videos, be sure to subscribe on YouTube at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. As well as hit me up on Twitter, I'm at seanfrangella if you have comments, requests for tutorials or wanna talk that way. And if you wanna get access to project files, you can grab those by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash seanfrangella, where you can help support the show and get all sorts of bonus content. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and want to see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash seanfrangella. More importantly, if you want to throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files used in the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash seanfrangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at seanfrangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see See you at the next video.